So we are back again with another video on the channel and today I want to do um, a video on suggesting what our best lineup could be with everyone fully fit and ready to go. Now I may need to do this video for a while but I want to, want to wait for the transfer window to be over to make this but I do want to talk about this and it is a potential best Arsenal 11. Now look Bear in mind, this is all my opinion. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below about what you disagree with. But the formation I'm going to go with is a five at the back. Now, I'm not a big advocate of it. But I think for this season, with how things have gone so far, I think it's best that we approach the rest of the season with a back three, uh, back five, whatever you want to call it. I do think this because, look, it, look, we're not the best defensively, are we? So we need more cover. And it looks like, you know, someone like Ben White, you know, he, he he can only play in a back three because that's what he's done at Brighton. So we have to play to his strengths because he's our £50 million centre-back. If we're not playing to the strengths of our £50 million centre-back, then what are we doing? Um, and we have to fit Gabriel into that. And the new signing, Tomiyasu, uh, Tommy I think he can play probably in that role as well, on the right centre-back next to Ben White. But we'll go into that in a second. But I think with Mikel Arteta... He is on the edge, and I want him gone, obviously, but this is about what he can do as a best 11 to try and take us forward, to try and make sure we create chances, to make sure he scores some goals, because we haven't scored a goal yet. You know, we need to score goals. That's how we're going to win football matches. That's how we're supposed to move. That's how we're supposed to go. And if we can't do that, then how are we meant to win games? And look, bearing that in mind, let's get straight into this. First of all, in goal, Burnt Leno. And obviously, Aaron Ramsdale might be our number one keeper in the future, but for now, I'm going to stick with Burnt Leno because, again, he's been our number one for quite a long time now. And, look, I don't think Aaron Ramsdale, he probably could be better than him. I don't know. I don't know that yet. Um, when You know, if I see him off in an Arsenal shirt, then I'll know. Um, but for now, I'm going to stick with Burnt Leno. It's the easiest thing to go with. Moving into the back three, first of all, uh, Tommy Yasu. I'm going to stick at the right centre-back row on new signing. I think he would be a good option as a right centre-back because... He's not, because one agent apparently told Cav Sky Cover that he's not a right back or a centre back. So the middle of that is a right centre back in a back three. Because if Cedric's going forward, Tommy Yusu can cover the right. Um, but if Ben White, uh, sorry, if Cedric is back, then Tommy Yusu can cover in as a third centre back. I think that is probably his best position. Is that one of the reasons we signed him? Now, we played a back three against Manchester City. Arteta probably saw that back line in for, oh shit, I need to sort that back line out. I, need, I got Gabriel, I got Ben White, who probably Arteta trusts, and he's thinking, I need a third centre-back. So he's probably looked at the market and thought, who's available that can play that right centre-back role quite well? He's defensive, but then he can also fill in out that right and, uh, right um, right and side role as well. He's probably looked at it and thought, look, Tommy Yusuf is probably my best option at the moment, and that's where he's going to sign him. That's I'm trying to look through the lenses of Arteta right now and probably that's what he's thinking. I do think it's probably a panic buy and it probably still is. I think Arteta's probably looked at the market and said, look, we needed another centre-back because I'm going to play a back three now. And he's probably gone and said, OK, look, Tommy Yusu is going to be my um, third option in the centre-back role. And look, if Arteta can get the best out of the back three, it's not a, it, it may not be a bad back three and it may work quite well at times. However... It's quite an inexperienced back three. There isn't much experience there. Who's going to be a leader in that back three? Who's the leader there? I can't see a leader. I would have rather kept David Luiz and then you could have Ben White, Gabriel and David Luiz. But we've gone with Tommy Yusuf instead. This project youth is happening because it doesn't look like Arteta to trust the senior players anymore. But look, that's the back three I'm going to go with. Stick with Gabriel on the left because I think Gabriel, left side of centre-back, he plays that quite well. Ben White, I'm going to stick in the middle. And I'm going to go with Tommy Yusuf on the right because I think that's probably best best position, taking all things into account. But again, I've not seen him yet, so he could be a better right back in the Premier League, could be a better centre back. I'm not too sure because, but I'm trying to make an assumption here. And when you look at our other centre back options like Rob Holding, no. Zed Klasinac, no. Who else have we got? Pablo Marie, maybe, but he's a left centre back, and I'd rather have. Yeah, when you look at right centre backs, Marie can't play there, so. Maybe you go with Benoit on the right and then Marie in the middle. But I don't like Marie in the middle. I don't think he has enough pace. He's quite slow on the ball and everything. Yeah, that's probably what I'm going to stick with. On the left wing back row, I'm going to go with Kieran Tierney. 
Now, Kieran Tierney, I do think he's a player that gets up and down and forward very well. And we need him to create chances going forward so he can spend more time going forward than coming back all the time. And I think that could be a very good position for him. He does play that for Scotland sometimes. So, look... Um, I think that's um, something that Tierney can do very well. On the right-hand side, I'm going to go with Cedric Suarez. Um, main reason being, I don't trust Callum Chambers anymore because that guy cannot defend for his life. On the right-hand side, he doesn't have enough pace or stamina to get up and down enough. That means Tomayusu and Ben White will get exposed to death with him. Cedric's more of an experienced guy, so I think, look, that's probably our best option. Um, Cedric, stick him on the right side. Moving into the midfield, first of all, Thomas Partey. Now, look, Thomas Partey, he has, has had a lot of injury problems, but he is still a top, top midfielder on his day. And, yeah, he is. You know, he's been... He was a world-class midfielder over there at Atletico. We signed him for his release clause, and he's had a lot of injuries. At times, he's shown us what he is capable of and why he was a world-class midfielder at Atletico. But we need to get the best out of him. Um, the reason I'm going to party in Lokonga, because I think... And sorry, Lekonga next to Barty, I forgot to mention that. You can see on the screen anyway. But Sambi Lekonga, I think, has played very well. And I've, I've always thought when when we signed Sambi that he can do a very good job next to Thomas Barty because I think these two would complement each other very well um, from what I've seen so far. But they can both um, venture forward in terms of they're good. They can, they can take the ball forward and then spray it out to... Um, they can spray out a long pass to Saka, Pepe on the wings or overlap it over to Tierney. They can both do that and they can both defend very well. Good tackling, good defending. So if they, we need to drop back and make it into a, a flipping, um, what have we got, a free five. We can make it into a seven at the back or whatever. Um, but yeah, when we need to park the bus against bigger teams where we, we are most, most likely to get exposed. I think Party and Okonga can do that very well. Uh, you may think, where do Smith and Odegaard fit in? They don't because we're not... we. In this system, you're not really going to get a number 10 or anything like that because then he'll become too exposed or maybe you could go with a 2-1-2 two, two up front, but I, I think this is probably the best way to move. On the left-hand side, I'm going to go with Bukayo Saka in the front three of the forward line. Um, look, Saka is probably, he was our best player last season um, by a mile probably and look, we need him to turn up with more goals this season and um, you know he's one of our best players and that's why he's there. On the right-hand side, Nicola Pepe. Main reason for this is, um, look, Pepe, he's, he's so, he's so, so lethal with his left foot. So if we can set him up with Cedric and um, Pepe, I think we're sweet. We're sweet in that position. And um, yeah, let's just hope Pepe cannot frustrate us and de de deliver us more this season. Up front is the main striker, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Some may say Martinelli, some may say Lacazette. But I think I'm going to keep my faith in Aubameyang because, look, he's a top striker. And if we can create the right chances for him in and around the box, you'll score. Because he's that kind of striker. Get him in the right positions and you will score. His movement's up there. Top three in the world. But we need to create chances for him. And I think this is, with this setup, I think this could be the right way to create chances for him. Get him in the box and get him scoring goals. Because if we want to be successful this season... Whatever success constitutes for any of you guys, I think Aubameyang, we need him scoring. And that is it for my best 11. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below about what you think. And that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.